Okay, so if you saw my last video, you'll know that my studio space is in desperate need of cleaning or tidying more so than cleaning. It is clean in here, it's just it really does need tidying. So that is what I'm going to do in this video and we're just going to chat and reset my studio space ready for this year. I'm going to show you what we're working with at the moment and hopefully we can get it into some form of a working studio again without me having to clamber and climb over absolutely everything just to get to this desk here behind me. So we're going to go through into the studio space so first thing first that I want to sort out is all of this just junk on the floor and where I've just like dumped art materials after using them sometimes if I sit at my desk and work I will just like chuck things down and just you know, like swatches, hoodies, artwork on the floor covered up in junk and it's just it's just too much i've got loads of stuff on here that just needs to be organized and tidied away so that i can focus and use the space as i intended it to be used as and not just like a dumping ground on this side we've also got my husband's desk here not all of this is his here i've got like my nail varnish on here i've got stamps on here also is anyone else fed up with how dark it is outside also look at my poor plants they look so sorry for themselves i think i need to go out and buy some new plants as well because look at them poor things have been so neglected just like this art studio look at this Ugh. i think this is like a metaphor for my life at the moment just look at how sorry and sad everything looks so i think i'm going to get started with all of this stuff just down here and reorganize it onto my shelves i don't think that the shelves are actually too bad they're still quite neat and tidy things like this that i've just left on the floor why why did i do this obviously i was creating something and then i was just too lazy to actually like properly put it away painting that I started never finished it's just laying on the floor I'm not sure if I will ever do anything else with it I suppose I can put it with all of my other artwork for now and I might come back to it eventually paper. Put that on my paper shelf this is from a video that I started where I was testing out lots of different techniques and textures for watercolours, each individual one into a short. If you would be interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments and I will continue with that video. I've got this as well, which I have worked through as an art business um, startup series. I found it really useful, but I just need to put things into action. But I think I need to finish this. This one can be easily tidied up. Okay, that's nice and tidy. It's my degree show catalogue. When I was at university, we created a catalogue for our degree. Um, so quite a few years ago now, but there's lots of artwork in here from students that were on my course. My artwork here. So it might not seem a lot, but just having moved all of those bits off of the floor and then kind of putting them ready in areas like this here on the shelf has made a big difference. It already seems like it's a lot clearer in here. So now I'm going to tackle underneath the desk and also try and get the artwork organized and sort out on top of my desk. Um, if you haven't seen the video already, the Ink Tense video has gone live and I created this little beetle, um, which I really love. I also need to send off this to the winner. So well done to Laura who won the watercolors. I will be sending those out to you. This is where I tend to store all of my artwork. Let's get rid of that. I don't need to keep empty washi tapes. So I've just got a whole pile of artwork, like these sorts of things that I've created. Let me know if you've seen any of these videos. If you're interested in seeing them, then they will be in playlists. This is from, I think, my very first YouTube video. I used a masking fluid pen and then also embossing powder. Let me know if you've seen that video. It's very awkward. I didn't really know what to talk about. 
Oh, here's my Mandalorian painting. I quite like this one. Elsa and we've got a robot. What else do we have here? Oh. Unfinished paintings. It's got masking fluid on there as well to take off. I don't know um, if I'll ever finish that one, but we'll see. That's wild. This has been in this little box for ages and it's still actually wet and I've had this acrylic paint in here for such a long time and even the tissue paper that's underneath this makeshift stay wet is still damp. My desk is currently looking a lot better and also underneath my desk is looking a lot clearer. Over here we've still got a bit of a mess over in that art cart but the real task now is to sort out this side of the room. Okay that's much better, it's not perfect but it's much better. That by the way is a wooden rifle that my husband has had since he was a child, it was made for a school play. Okay now I'm going to tackle this on top here, hopefully we can get this looking nice and tidy. So my husband is a geography teacher so he needs to have these textbooks at home so he can plan his lessons and things like that so I think this will just be an easy setup for him. So I think this looks like a nice functional workspace now, we've got those geography textbooks, space to work in, an area for taking notes so I think hopefully this should stay nice and neat. This is one of the things that I had in the bag just there, um, it's one of the things that I really wanted to buy when we went to Disney World and I'm going to find a space for it in one of our bathrooms. It's a hand soap and when you dispense it, it comes out of the shape of Mickey Mouse. I feel like we're getting there. I've put a canvas over there to gesso over because I don't want to waste it. It's not a canvas that I want to keep. Yeah, we just need to sort out that stuff over there and we also need to sort out this little pile of stuff here. Then a vacuum and I reckon that will pretty much be it in the organization. I've decided that I'm going to gesso over some of my canvases so that I can reuse them because I don't intend on ever actually doing anything with this painting. So the best thing for it is to gesso over it and then I can reuse it. So I bought this pot of gesso, it's a one litre pot of gesso and I bought this from Cass Arts and it was a really good price, I'll link it in the description box. I don't get any sort of affiliate with this one so I just thought it was a really good deal. You might also remember that I bought all of these square canvas boards. I'm going to add a ground to them so that I can then work on top of them. So I'm going to just paint them with a magenta. I'm lazy to this, I'm just adding my magenta straight to the board. And I'm going to just um, paint it out with a paintbrush. We'll add a bit of water. So I'm simply just adding this ground, which will act as kind of my primer for these canvas boards. So you don't need a lot of paint on them, just a nice wash of colour across. And then this will help you when it comes to choosing your colours for your paintings. And also I like to be able to see a little bit of this primed canvas pop through my paintings as well.
I've finished. I finally sorted and organized my studio space. I'm really happy with how it's looking and I'm going to give you a little tour on where I keep everything and what I have included in my studio. I have two sets of newer lights which I usually have set up either side of my desk but just because I'm filming in here now I've decided to set them up over there to give a bit of light because it is quite dull today. So my desk is over here and then on my desk I have this sort of boom arm that is movable and I use this when I'm filming overhead. It's not anything too fancy but it's really really useful for filming and also fairly inexpensive as well. I've been using this for quite a while now. I might try and upgrade this though because when I'm drawing sometimes if I'm using quite a bit of pressure my desk will move around and this will kind of like wobble ever so slightly so I need to look into a better solution but for now this is fine. Then over on my desk I've got a glass palette that I use. It needs a bit of a clean which I need to buy sort of like a scraper tool for this but it's really nice work on glass. I then have two pots of water. I always have two pots of water on my desk for when I'm painting and I try and let these run out naturally so I'm not wasting loads and loads of water and also putting lots of stuff down the drain that shouldn't really go down the drain. I have some paint brushes on my desk but they're not my favourite ones. They're just kind of like cheap ones that I use for everyday sort of like bits and bobs. And I also have my tape dispenser which I bought not too long ago. Candle, it's quite nice to have candles on when I'm painting. Um, I just find that quite relaxing. We've got a little palette that I created. I made this one with air dry clay and then I glazed it. And then my art cart over here, I've got more paint brushes, tapes, and then acrylic paints. I haven't tidied this area up just yet, but it's not looking too bad. Above my desk, I have got a shelf for frames and I've put some of my artwork in those frames and then I have got another palette there just because I really like the look of it with all of the paint that I have used in the past. Although I don't really use that palette now, I just really like the look of it. That's my basic desk setup. I wouldn't mind getting some of the Alexa drawers or something like that. I think that's what they're called from Ikea. So then I can keep my paper stored in there. So that's on my list of things to buy for my desk and hopefully that will also help it remain a little bit more stable because it does wobble ever so slightly. I wouldn't mind a rug or something on the floor as well just in case I do spill some paint I can put that in the wash or whatever. Across from my desk I've got this Billy bookcase set up so we've got a mixture of art materials in little boxes and some art books, other books that my husband might use like these ones here which are his geography books and on the most part though it's made up with art materials. We also do have a few music books because my husband is a music position so we both use this space. So I have these really handy little buckets or bins, storage boxes and they are stackable so you can have one on top of the other although I have them just as is in um, one space in one area of the bookshelf. So these ones I have filled with acrylics and I've labelled on each of them what I have in there. So it's just nice and easy. I can go to whatever area it is, pull it out, and then I know what I'm getting. On this shelf, I have all of my watercolours. So I have my watercolour tins in this one. I've got some gouache paints here. Also this set of gouache paints, which I did mean to send back, but I missed the timing for my refund, so I couldn't send that one back. And then I've got this Artistro set of watercolours, which were sent to me by them quite a while ago. They were quite nice paints to use. On this part of my bookcase, this is where I keep everything for my colouring pencils. So I've got sets of colouring pencils here in their tins. I don't like to mix them up in sort of those storage, open storage wooden boxes, but I have been trying to increase my Faber-Castell polychromo set. So I might buy one of those just to put all of my polychromos in because I'm having to keep them in separate areas. So I might buy something just for my Faber-Castells to go in. And again, it says um, colouring pencils on this book and I do have smaller sets of colouring pencils and also other types of colouring pencil burnishers and blenders and things like that and also erasers so I've got a mixture of different colouring pencil brands in here I've got some Crayola um, bits and bobs and then 
other brands at the back there. This area I keep just with my small canvases. So these ones are the ones that I was prepping. I've got a few of them ready to go. I've got a larger one there as well, which is ready to be painted onto. I also have a few of these boxes, which have got lids on them. They are good for storing away other art materials that I might not use so often. This one has got all of my paint pouring paints in. I bought from, where did I get those from? I can't remember. Arteza. So I've got paint pouring from Arteza. This is full of all of my paint pouring stuff, but it's not something that I actually will use very often. So this is where I keep all of that. And it's quite nice being able to just then put the lid on it. I got all of these different types of little storage boxes from Ikea and they're really inexpensive and they're really useful. You can get them in white and I think now you can actually get them in a green, which the green looks really nice. I also keep gesso down in this area and then I've got some more canvases and wooden boards and things like that here. At the very top, although they keep kind of falling down a bit. I've got some sketchbooks. I do have more sketchbooks but I keep those ones out in the garage and then I've got an old PlayStation that I've painted on which I do have a video of so I'll link that one if you want to see it. Along the bottom I do have more art materials and this one I have art mediums, pastels and actually that should be in this one because that's a pencil blending solution so that should go in that one. Pens. So I've got different types of pens in here. I've got the Royal Talons, Ecoline brush pens. I've got some of the double-ended pens here. Micron pens. So any types of pens that I might have. I've also got a big chalk pen. Any types of pens that I have, I'll keep them in here. However, I do have my alcohol markers separate. So I've got my Ohuhu ones and then I do have others in there as well. I want to keep the Ohuhu ones in the packaging though because they're really nicely organized in there and I don't really want to muddle them up with the other ones that I have. On this shelf, I keep all of my papers. So all of my loose papers or paper pads, I keep those on this shelf and I do also have a little guillotine on this side. It needs a bit more organizing here but I've got some of my swatches and things like that. I've got a few of my art books over on this shelf. This is one of my favorite photography books. That's a photograph of me as a baby and Holly um, and my nan. This is one of my favorite photography books which is um, called Zones of Exclusion. It's a really nice photography book which I've had for quite a long time and I used to always get this one out at the library when I was at uni so I actually put it on a Christmas wish list and I did get that for Christmas one year. A couple more boxes so I have a few tools and bits and bobs in this one for clay work. I don't use clay all that often so I keep things like that in one of these boxes. I've got my gimbal for if I ever do any sort of filming out and about. I should have probably used that for this so it would have been a bit steadier but I didn't so I've got my gimbal which is really handy for filming on and that's about everything in terms of my art materials. Down here I keep clay so just air dry clay and I've got a nice camera bag that I have if I'm ever out filming which I would like to do a little bit more of a vlog channel but I will upload that onto a different channel than this one because I know you guys aren't here to watch my vlogs you're here to watch art videos. And then over here we have a set of drawers which are full of bits and bobs really. They need a good organise but I'm not going to do that today. I'm really happy with how it now looks and then this is the other side of the studio. So yeah that's my entire studio space. Thank you so much for watching. I do really really appreciate it especially when it's like organising my studio space because I really needed a push to get this finished and organised. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it make sure you give it a big thumbs up and also so make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on one of my future videos and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!